Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 50. Wow, you guys, can you believe that it's already been 50 shows? I want to take this time and thank all of you, my valuable listeners, for all the information you've shared with me in terms of how much this podcast has helped you with your business, presented you new ideas, and continued you on your journey. The only reason I do this is for you guys, and so I really do appreciate that feedback. I have a really special guest today, so let's get on with the show. I have yet to see anything that builds the know, like, and trust factor at the rate that it does. Hi, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to Gift Biz Unwrapped, and now it's time to light it up. Welcome to Gift Biz Unwrapped, your source for industry-specific insights and advice to develop and grow your business. And now, here's your host, Sue Monheit. Hi there, I'm Sue, and welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Whether you own a brick-and-mortar shop, sell online, or are just getting started, you'll discover new insight to gain traction and to grow your business. I am so proud and honored to have with us today, Kim Garst. Kim is the best-selling author of Will the Real You Please Stand Up? Show Up, Be Authentic, and Prosper in Social Media. She is also the CEO of Boom Social, a social selling training and consulting company that helps businesses of all sizes leverage social and digital marketing strategies to increase their traffic, leads, and sales. Kim is internationally recognized as a thought leader in the social media space. Forbes named her as one of the top 10 social media power influencers, and she regularly contributes to Entrepreneur.com and Huffington Post. Her own blog, KimGarst.com, is one of the top social media resources in the world. Kim lives in Tampa, Florida with her husband and her two fur babies. I just love that, Kim. The two fur babies. (laughs) Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here, Sue. Thanks so much for inviting me. Is there anything that we should add to your intro before we get started? Um, No, I think that pretty much sums it up. I would like to just share real quickly. I am very passionate about shortening learning curves, whether you're a new business owner or whether you're a business owner that's been around for a little bit, but you just feel like you're stuck in some places. That's my passion is really taking somebody's situation and giving them the knowledge that they can take back into their businesses and make a difference. That's fabulous because that's my passion as well. And that's why most people are listening here today. So I I am so excited to dive in. And as our listeners know, we like to start the conversation and revolve it around the life of a motivational candle. The light shines on you, Kim, while you share your stories and experiences. So are you ready to light it up? Let's light it up. All right. What color is your motivational candle and what would be the quote on that candle? I think it would be purple because purple is one of my favorite colors. And it would say, I can do all things through him who gives me the strength to do it. Wonderful. And how do you use this as you're going through your daily life? Basically, I have found that, you know, I am very spiritual and I find that if I don't feel like I'm in this all alone, (laughs) that somebody, there is a higher power that gives me strength. And if I lean on that strength, it has really given me a sense of encouragement and comfort and knowing that I can do more. And that's how I leverage that quote. I love that quote. And I really agree with you. I mean, all of us who are striving in this world, you just can't do it alone, whether it's spiritual and the faith like you're talking about, or you have someone else who's supporting you, who's believing in you. I think behind every successful person, there's someone else that people can lean on. And it's not a sign of weakness when you are asking for help and support from somebody. Absolutely agree. In fact, regardless of whether you're spiritual or not, if you have someone, and sometimes it's, you know, multiple someones that you can rely on, whether you're in a mastermind with other business owners, or whether you have a really supportive spouse. I've had that in my life. My husband has been my biggest cheerleader for, oh, you know, our entire married life. And so I've had that, you know, at my back also. But, you know, you can just connect with people that are on the same path. And, you know, social media in particular gives us a great opportunity to do that and surround ourselves with people that want the same things and are going in the same direction. There's that old saying that you're the sum of the five people that you, you know, surround yourself with or the top five people that you surround yourself with. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. If you stop and think about it for a moment and say, wow, you know, if I'm 
you know, surrounding myself with negative can't do people or am I surrounding myself with positive can do people? And how does that impact your day to day? It definitely impacts your day to day. Totally agree. Kim, when I was thinking about what we were going to talk about, there are so many ways we can go because you just know so much about a lot of things. But I want to address the elephant in the room of the day right now around social media, and that is live streaming. It's been Oh, not even quite a year that Periscope's been around and there's Snapchat and now there's Facebook Live, you know, all of that. And I've gotten a lot of questions lately about, well, you know, how does this apply to my business? Why should I be using it for my business? I know you are very in tune to all of live streaming. So can you address that a little bit in terms of what's the value? What is the big deal about this anyway? Well, basically, from a live, I call it live video now. When, when they first started, it was live streaming, but it's really just all encompassing because you're right. There's so many applications for um, or, or apps or, you know, whether it's Facebook Live or whether it's Periscope or Snapchat, to your point, they're all mediums. Honestly, why should someone care and why should you be, um, you know, is it something you should implement in your business? I'll just say this because I think this is probably the simplest way to answer the question. I've been online and owned an online business, multiple online businesses now for almost 25 years. And I have gone through the entire, almost the entire process of how an online business starts and and then the seasons of things that have come and gone over the years and been involved in tons of different marketing mediums and whether they're paid or free or whatever. And I have yet to see anything like live video that builds the know, like, and trust factor at the rate that it does. And video in particular, and a lot of business owners have heard that video is, oh, you got to do videos. You got to put videos on YouTube. And yet it's a holdup. And so many people haven't literally said, oh, you know, I'm going to make the time for that. Or like in my case, it was a pain point for me. It was like, okay, it has to be perfect. And I felt like every time I sat down in front of the camera, I was talking to myself and it didn't come across as genuine. And so when live streaming came along, I still kind of viewed it like that. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to sit down in front of a camera and it's going to be even worse because people are going to see me live in real time. And what if I screw up? I can't edit that. You know, so I worried about that, those aspects of it until I actually did it and realized that I could engage with people in real time. And I was hooked. Like I say, I guess the simple answer, and I I really was trying to make it simple and went off on a boondoggle. But the simple answer, again, is if you're serious about building a connected community or a tribe, it is the fastest way to do so that I've ever seen. And if someone was interested in starting, how do you make sure that the right people are listening to your scope then? Well, that's a process. It could be, honestly, it could be a Periscope or it could be a Facebook Live now. Almost everybody has access to Facebook Live on their business pages for the most part. If you're an iOS user, let me specify that. It's rolling out slowly but surely, but a lot of people have access to it on their fan pages now. So whether you're going to do Facebook Live or whether you're going to do Periscope or, and my recommendation is to do both simultaneously, which is what I've been doing. That way you're using one block of time and you're serving two spaces, you know, two communities simultaneously. So if if you already have a fan base, then you could do Facebook Live and pull in the community that you've already built. And if you're just getting started on Periscope, leverage your other social platforms to let people know that you're going to be live on Periscope. And then, of course, there's a ton of other ways that you can do this. Uh, You know, once you get active on Periscope, you can start having some consistent strategies to jump on other people's scopes, start to connect and ultimately add value to other people's scopes as well so that people will say, hey, that person's pretty neat and I'm going to follow that person. There's lots of ways that you can attract people to you, but the short answer is get started, then leverage your other communities that you've built in other places to drive traffic to the locations that you're going to be live to include your list. If you have a list, let people know on your list that you're going to be periscoping at a certain time and this is going to be the topic. In fact, Sue, do you mind if I share a quick story? Please do. 
Okay, I have an associate, basically an acquaintance, not really a friend, but someone who shared their story with me as it related to how they had leveraged Periscope. They didn't have a big social media presence. So a lot of people that are listening right now may say, well, yeah, Kim just said I needed to use my other social platforms, but you know, I'm not really active and I don't have a big fan base and I'm not here, I'm not there. And so that's not really going to work for me. So does that mean I can't use it? So this particular lady had a list. Her list wasn't terribly huge. She had about 10,000 people on her list. And again, some are saying, well, wow, my list isn't anywhere near that. But the point is that she leveraged what she had. And so she decided to do a scope every day for 30 days. That was her strategy. And she gave content, just value after value after value. Basically, they were live video blogs, essentially. And she invited her list every day to those periscopes. And that's how she started. The interesting part is, through the course of those 30 days, she sold 71 of her $15,000 coaching packages. Wow. So she made over a million dollars, if you do the math in a very short window of time simply by giving value and leveraging the community that she had already built, which was her list. Wow, that's a great story. I'm really glad you thought about sharing that. And I want to drive home what Kim's talking about, Gift Biz listeners, in that there's no other medium with the no like, and trust. And I would emphasize that middle word, the like. And even though it's live, it can be really scary because you're not editing those little mess ups that you do or words that you mispronounce or all of that are how people like you because they can relate to you, you're human, you're one of them. Just an idea that came up just to again bring this home to some of our listeners. If you are a jeweler and you make beautiful jewelry, for example, maybe you're a beater, some of the types of things that you can do on scope are demos. Teach other people how to bead. You're not on to sell, you're on to give value as Kim was talking about. You can do demos. You can do interviews with customers. You can do things about your shop. Maybe you're painting your shop and you want to have an audience help you with a new color, selecting color. So, you know, anything. There's just so many creative ways to use this medium that I don't want you to think that it's just for people who are selling services or the big time people. It can be for absolutely anybody. People do cooking demos, all sorts of things. If you have not looked at any of these live live video type platforms yet, meaning Periscope or Facebook Live, go in and search and take a look at what people are doing. It's really a great option. I have another story. Oh, good. Jump right in and tell it. Yeah, I, because I it tied right into what you just said as to how other people are leveraging it, specifically in the space that you serve. So, so let's say, for example, you make clothing or anything that has an Etsy kind of application where you're trying to sell your crafts or your products on Etsy. I have a client who was a designer, a clothing designer, and uh, she spent a half day, a half of a VIP day with me, oh, I guess probably six months ago. And one of the ideas I gave her is I'm like, sweetie, please start periscoping and showing your clothing. I said, you can dress up in your clothes, you can uh, style it, whatever. And that's exactly what she has been doing. And she has translated that even as far as a Facebook group where she posts those videos in her Facebook group every evening. And it has changed the face of her business. She creates sales each and every day through her Facebook group because it's a connected community of people who said, hey, I want to pay attention to what you're doing. And, you know, I want to see what the latest and greatest is when you get a new print, for example. I want to know what it looks like. And so that's exactly what she does. And she is literally changed the face of her business with this one tip. Wow. And also so many people, you know, when they get one outfit, it's like, what do I match with it? How do I wear it? What is it going to look like? So she's all of that world has opened up to her viewers by her demonstrating that. And she's partnered with people who do jewelry, for example, as a medium to share their product with her clothing line, right? So she will do scarves and necklaces and bracelets and everything that kind of goes along with accessorizing, even down to the shoes. And not only is she changing her business, but she has changed the face of other people's businesses because she's selling other people's accessories, essentially, to go with her clothing line. Right, And that can just go on and on and on. Absolutely. So Kim, you were the first person to bring out a training program for using Periscope. 
if someone now we hopefully we sparked some interest in people who haven't ever thought of using this for themselves before if you could just give a couple of ideas of how you should get started and then also make mention of your course so that if people are interested they'll know about that Okay, sure. Well, yes, I was one of the first to develop a Periscope for Business course. I'm always very careful to make sure that people are aware. It's not just about, hey, this is how you use the Periscope app. It's how do you leverage it for business? And there are so many ways. And so many times people say, oh, well, that's just a new thing. Do I have, you know, that's one more thing. I don't have time for one more thing. So I have been challenging business owners to think about changing their thinking and then leveraging the time slot that they spend on Periscope as a medium to create content for all their other social platforms. So let me explain what I mean by that. Basically taking a block of time, say 20 to 30 minutes and giving a value add, you know, maybe it's five ways to do X and basically talk a concept and give some value, five tips on something very specific. When you're done with that, you can leverage the video, one, but you can transcribe it and turn that into a blog post. You can take out tweetable moments. We all say things, you know, in the course of, uh, you know, conversing and sharing our ideas and our knowledge or expertise. And we can take out those blurbs and turn them into, you know, tweets for Twitter, or we could turn them into visual content for Facebook and Instagram. And the beautiful part about it is it's our words. So you can take a block of time, you know, 20 to 30 minute block of time, do a live video, and then multi-purpose that one piece of content into 50 pieces of content that you can share across all of your platforms. So I'm sharing and trying to encourage people to to realize that this is actually a time saver. Then you're not sitting down in front of Facebook and saying, oh man, what am I going to share today? You just have to learn how to segment it and repurpose it essentially in multiple ways. And you're so right because so many people are like, well, what do we put up? What do I post? And this actually leads into talking about social media that I want to get to in a minute. But you're right. And the preparation for a live video is so much less than even writing a blog. I mean, that takes so much longer to do. Absolutely. And the reality is we all know our stuff. We all know our expertise and we can speak it usually much quicker than we can write it. I mean, that's just the reality of it. To your point exactly, you know, write down, okay, here's my five bullet points of, you know, what I want to speak about and what I want to share and then share that on Periscope or on Facebook Live or snippets of it even on Snapchat if you so choose to do so. That's an opportunity that you can leverage across the board and then again, create multiple touch points from the one piece of content that you just literally spent 30 minutes creating. So these are the types of things I teach in my course. And if they're, you know, if it's something that's like, wow, that's interesting, I really, that makes sense to me, you can definitely check it out. My website is scopingforbizbiz.com. No sales push here. I'm just, if it's if it's of interest to you and you want to, you know, check it out, please feel free to. Perfect. And just one final question on this whole live video. The absolute hardest part, I think, for everybody is they know what they're going to do. They put their title up there and then they see that big red button that says start broadcast. What is your single best piece of advice for people who are going to touch it and then they're afraid and then they're going to touch it and then they relook at their notes and then they're going to touch it and they're about to walk away. What would you say to them then? Well, having been there myself, because that was a problem even for me, and I would say that most people would probably say the same, Um, you know, when they first get started, there's that fear factor of putting yourself out there and not knowing what's on the other side. So my suggestion to you would be to practice in advance, you know, with Periscope in particular, you can't do this with Facebook Live, but with Periscope, you can. You can do what's called private scopes. So maybe get a friend or two to uh, watch you and give you some feedback. That might be one suggestion I have. But ultimately, you just have to have the courage to get beyond the fear factor and just do it. I know that's easier said than done, but do the practice and then just have the courage to do it. Even if there's not anyone watching, you know, if you don't see a bunch of people flooding in, that's still content that you're setting down and creating that can you can leverage in oh so many other ways. So until you get, you know, build that community and people start coming in routinely and paying attention and giving you feedback, use it as a way to create content quickly and easily and then multipurpose that content. 
Perfect. You've given a great demonstration of how all of the information that you're doing live then can be on your different social media platforms. So that's perfect. I want to back it up a little farther. I think because there are now so many platforms out there, and I hear this from people all the time, I don't have time to be on every single platform. Which ones should I be choosing? Which ones do I really need? Which ones are really going to help me grow my business? What advice do you have for someone? Let's take a scenario where someone is just starting out and they're just building their business. Do they have to be on all these platforms at once or what would your advice be to someone like that? Well, no, you don't. So take a big, deep breath and say, whew, thank goodness. Kim said I don't have to be everywhere. You don't. In fact, you know, even myself who's in the social media space has, you know, said, you know, I'm going to focus on a few of these platforms and do them really well. And then if I have a little bit more time, then, you know, maybe I'll get active over there. About a month ago, I got a tweet from Gary Vaynerchuk and he said, Kim, are you on Snapchat? chat and I'm like oh man Gary V just called me out on Twitter I've got to get over there get active oh my gosh for a few days I was like oh man I'm one I've got to learn it because it was a whole new platform and I don't think it's intuitive and well do I need to be here is my ideal customer here so I think the short answer is no you do not have to be active everywhere and you need to decide independently each business owner needs to decide what kind of time and resources do I have to devote to social media And if you have a little bit of time and no resources to speak of, in other words, you have no help, I personally think that most everyone's ideal client is probably on Facebook. It's kind of the elephant. But let's say, for example, you know, your ideal customer is a woman, then maybe you need to be more active on Pinterest or Instagram. And of course, like I shared with you, uh, Periscope and Facebook Live are great mediums for creating content and connecting face to face with people. So do you, do you, would you rather spend 30 minutes on Periscope or Facebook Live or maybe both simultaneously and create blog content for your website? Or would you rather sit down and spend two to three hours writing that content? So I, across the board, you know, I'm saying you need to decide where you feel your ideal client is active and where you can connect with them and where you feel comfortable the most. Because honestly, that's where you're going to spend the majority of your time. That's why I see a lot of people gravitate back to Facebook because they feel comfortable there. Most of us start on Facebook. And the good news is for most business owners, their ideal clients are absolutely on Facebook. So it just depends. But I think you need to evaluate it. And I would also say that you need to master one and start getting success from one or two before you try to embrace seven or eight, because ultimately you're going to do none of them well. Excellent advice, Kim. I appreciate that. And now everyone can take a big breath and sigh of relief and follow Kim's advice. Let's talk in Facebook, particularly, I think people who are just starting out, let's talk about that group again. They have a personal page already, right? So what's your advice? And and, and possibly they've attracted customers to their personal page because they haven't had a fan page yet. Even what I've noticed on my platforms is between my personal and my fan pages, a lot of my customers like to be on both. They like to interact with me on my personal page as well. What are your thoughts about the difference between the two? And what do you do as a business owner when you've got people because you've friended them on your personal page and then they also are on your fan page? A lot of business owners, especially when they're new, don't realize that they are violating Facebook's terms of service when they leverage their personal profile for business. So technically, you are not allowed to use your personal profile for commerce. So you have to be very careful. That doesn't mean you can't share things that are happening in your business. You can't just try to directly sell. In other words, you can't post your latest necklace and say it's $20 or $50 or $100 or whatever it is and try to sell it from your pay, I mean, from your profile. That's why you have to have a business page if you're really wanting to build a platform for your business, your products and your services. That said, though, there is a crossover exactly to your point, Sue, where lots of times when you first get started, you have connections in both places, you know, and people will connect with you on your personal profile because 
you've built a relationship with them and they want to connect with you regardless. And I don't see that that's a problem when people are connecting and engaging with your content on your personal profile. You just have to redirect them to your fan page or your business page if you are going to try to conduct any kind of financial transaction. And I've heard horror stories of people's pages being shut down. Are those personal pages or fan pages? Well, you can get your business page shut down for trying to do business because that's what they are. I mean, that's what they're designed for. But if you are leveraging your personal profile for commerce and someone reports you, you could absolutely lose your whole Facebook account. Normally, they give you a warning or put you in what we call Facebook jail. <laughs> you know, two, two weeks, sorry, you can't do X, Y, or Z. But I have seen some people just literally try to log on, you know, one morning and lo and behold, they no longer have a Facebook account. And the reality is in many times our personal profiles are tied to our fan pages, which means we can't access our fan page. And it's, it can create a real, real problem that you just don't need. So my advice always is to try to keep it separate. And I would also recommend that you have someone else be an admin on your page in case something does happen to your personal profile. You know, someone you trust, you know, a relative or friend that can access your fan page in the event that you do lose your personal profile for some reason. That is a great piece of advice. I've never thought of that and I have not done that. I'm going to be doing that this afternoon for sure. Yeah. Because something can happen just by accident and you can't access it. Absolutely. Even if you go so far as to create an account that's, I hate to say um, fake, I don't mean it like that, but maybe something like maybe use um, your maiden name or something and have a separate Facebook account that you have total control over has a different email address because you can't use the same email address. And yet that's kind of your backup for your fan page. Excellent idea. So Gift Biz listeners, if any of you are in this situation because you just didn't know and you are using your personal page for business, go right away this afternoon. It's really super easy to create a fan page. You just you link it to your personal page because you have to have a profile personal page to create a fan page. And all you do is you make your fan page fill in as you do any platform and then it's linked to your personal profile. But just get that taken care of. So you've got it established, you've grabbed your name, and then you can start filling it in as you go. But heed the advice because you know, sometimes once you hear it, (laughs) then all of a sudden it can happen to you. So you don't want that to happen. (laughs) Definitely not. (laughs) No, definitely not. All right. I'd like to roll over now into our reflection section, Kim. This is a place where we take a look at you a little bit further and you give us some advice and guidance and expertise on what's made you successful along the way. If you think back to when you were a little girl and as you were growing up and, you know, in your corporate life and building the online businesses, What would you say is one trait that just naturally comes to you that you've drawn on to be successful? And, you know, I would have to say in some cases, I'm not sure it's an attractive one, but just pure stubbornness. I refuse to give up. It's one of those things when, you know, I've gone through a lot over the years. In fact, it took me almost five years to make my first $60 in my first business. And some people would say, oh, my goodness, how in the world? Why did you keep after it? And I look back in hindsight and I'm like, why in the world did my husband not say, honey, give it up already. You're not (laughs) going to make any money. And yet I just kept persevering pressing on and that is kind of been my thing and you know recently I had a virus on my computer and my husband's like just take it somewhere and I'm like no they are not going to win (laughs) I'm going to do this I'm going to figure this out and uh, so stubbornness you know I just don't quit I have a don't quit attitude and it doesn't mean that I haven't had failures and that I haven't had to say okay it's time for a bubble bath and just whine and you know cry a little bit get it over out of my system and then next day I get up and get after after it again. I guess that's pretty much, I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily one of those like um, kind of a bright and shiny uh, reason, but that's mine is I just don't give up. You know, you would be surprised at how many people use the same word or they'll say the tenacity to continue or just, you know, whatever that persistence. So many people are using a similar answer to this question, which really is telling me that being a successful entrepreneur, you don't stop. You 
find the answer. You find the way to go on. And interestingly enough, Kim, you'll enjoy this. My scope topic for today, I'm going to be talking about Seth Godin's book, The Dip. Uh And he talks in there about when you face a challenge and you face a struggle and possibly it's your finger about to press that start broadcast button. So many people quit there. You know, so many people will just stop and say, I I just can't do it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's easier to quit. Right. I mean, when we we get up, uh, when we feel fear, you know, it's, it's and I'll just share my story real quick as it relates to fear. I have kind of made fear my BFF. You know, if I feel fear and I'm like, wow, I don't know if I can do that. Um, hmm, That sounds like it's tough. I just kind of suit up because I'm like, okay, I'm exactly where I need to be right now because I know if I push through, then there's something great on the other side because that's always been the case for me. When I started periscoping, for example, I wasn't comfortable with that. I wasn't like, I didn't want to get on, you know, and, and worry about hair and makeup and what to say and tripping over my words and, you know, not having that perfection because I was a perfectionist and I was really concerned about that. But because I pressed through, there's been so many great things on the other side of that fear. So anytime you're feeling fear or if you are thinking, wow, this just isn't working out for me, it doesn't mean that where you are is going to work out. It means maybe you you turn around and, you know, go back a few paces or go down another path, but you just don't quit. I think that's a key. And I think it's interesting that you said that about other entrepreneurs, because the reality is there is not a successful entrepreneur on this planet planet that hasn't had failure. In fact, fail faster is my motto. Learn from your mistakes and, you know, just keep pressing forward. I think that's a critical mindset for entrepreneurs that reach different levels of success, whether they're just getting started and they, you know, they create that first sale or, you know, they're at an extra thousand dollars a month or an extra 5,000 or an extra 10,000. You know, we go through spells in our business, just keep pressing and keep pushing that fear to the curb. Absolutely. Do not quit. Whether it's a financial struggle or a technology struggle or emotions because you're just nervous, know that the majority of people will stop at that point. So if you continue on, then you are marching yourself towards success. It might be a different avenue you need to take, but there's always a solution. And as we were talking about before, that's where you have your support that we were talking about way in the beginning of this podcast. Whether it's your faith, whether it's a spouse or a friend or a network you know, connections within your networking group. There are so many resources out there, online groups, you know, we're talking about, you know, social media. So right online, there are so many resources, but the whole point is do not quit. All right, I have got off on a tangent here, but... Can you tell we're both passionate about this though? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think it was really important to hear. Uh-huh. And it reinforces to all of us. All right, so... As you're working through your day, Kim, in the office, is there a particular tool that you use to stay productive? We have actually started using a tool called Slack, Slack slack.com. That's S-L-A-C-K.com. And it has really streamlined our team communication, made tracking conversations and finding things much easier. So I'm actually loving that. And I think we're going to start using a tool called Trello as well. And I don't have much experience with that yet. I hesitate to even mention it, but I'm loving it so far. What does Trello do? Trello is a project management tool. So you can pop in and build out your projects like here's the to-do list, assign tasks to certain people on your team if you have a team. Once things are completed, you can move it to another box. You know, these things are completed. These are still to-do. And it's all visual. It looks very similar to a Pinterest board. So you can see everything in a visual way. And for me, that's important because I'm a visual person. So both of those tools are something that uh, Slack highly recommend. Trello is something we're just starting with and so far loving it. Okay. And you'd use them as, as a combo is what you're saying. In our case, we do. Yes. Um, depending on, you know, whether like if you have a team, uh, Slack is awesome. If you don't, you may not need Slack. But Trello might be a great way to manage your individual projects. Wonderful. And what book have you read lately that you think our listeners could find value in? A whole stack of them. I, you know, that's what <laughs> things for me that I, you know, people are constantly sending me their books. One that I am really liking lately that was just released, in fact, is called Hug Your Haters by Jay Bear. Mm-hmm. It's basically how to embrace complaints and keep your customers, which I am really liking this book. It's got a great message. 
And it would be something that I would recommend to the people listening, simply because it's kind of got a different angle. And it's so important. You know, so many times we are always stressing over the next customer. Where do we find the next customer? You know, and and the reality is if we just took care of our existing customers, they would bring us new customers. I agree with you. And I actually, I haven't read Hug Your Haters yet, but I love Jay Bear, you know, with his utility book. And you're right. It's an absolutely different approach. So Gift Biz listeners, don't assume that you know what this title is suggesting because it is a really different twist in terms of what they're talking about. It gave me a lot of thoughts for my business, too. So I'm really glad that you brought that one on. Have you read the whole thing already, Kim? I am about, oh, probably three-fourths of the way through. Sounds like I might need to be getting that one, too. I think yeah. he had, I think he'd mentioned on this podcast that it's going to go audio, too. So, which leads right into what I wanted to say next, which is, as you know, Gift Biz listeners, you guys like listening to audio. I've teamed up with Audible. So if you would like to get Hug Your Haters as an audiobook, all you need to do is go to giftbizbook.com and make a selection. And my guess is if it's not up there right now, it will be shortly. And there are a ton of really great books available on audio. So check that out. Kim, how can our listeners best get in touch with you? Now, our show notes page is going to give a whole slew of platforms, but if there were two places that you would have people come to interact with you, what would they be? I'll just tag on to what you were saying about Audible. My book is actually in an Audible format now, and you can find it, of course. I don't know if it's on audible.com, but it's definitely on Amazon as an Audible uh, download. So that might be something. Um, you did know, you, did to, you record it yourself? I did not record it myself. I actually chose the voice over because I didn't have time, honestly, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> to do the recording. And my publisher said, hey, you know, we'll take on, assume the cost of this because the book sold very well. And they decided to turn it into an audio, which was awesome. I was excited about that. Well, I have read your book all the way through and I will give it a golden star. So anybody who has not read that book, will the real you please stand up? Absolutely positively get it. Now you can do in paperback and audio. So there you go. Yes, I only mentioned it because you mentioned the audio version. So that was pretty, pretty cool. But the, to get back to the, the question is, where can you reach me? I am literally everywhere on social media, on all the platforms as my name, Kim Garst. My website is kimgarst.com forward slash blog. If you're looking for social media slash business building blog content, there's a ton of it there. You can connect with me there, but literally on any social platform, just reach out, Google me. There you go. That's what I tell people. Just Google me and you can find me. (laughs) Perfect. All right. Now, Kim, let's dare to dream. I'd like to present you with a virtual gift. It's a magical box containing unlimited possibilities for your future. This is your dream or your goal of almost unreachable heights that you would wish to obtain. Please accept this gift and open it in our presence. What is inside your box? Oh, I love this because I'm a big possibilities person. I'm always telling people, believe in your possibles. So I'm thinking that if I open this box up and let's see what's in it, there is the opportunity for me to impact and help people, 10,000 people grow their business by double digits in the next year. That's what's in my box. There you go. Nothing like a smart goal there, Kim. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I would love to be able to do that. 10,000 business owners and help them double their business, double their bottom lines in the next year. There you go. Well, Gift Biz listeners, some of you could be one of those 10,000. So make sure to catch up with Kim on the media sites we were talking about just a little bit earlier. Kim, I really, really appreciate your taking the time. I know how super busy that you've been lately and for just taking a little bit of time out to share all of your knowledge, great suggestions, some things that I think are pretty unique our listeners will not have heard before you've presented to us today. So I really, really appreciate your time and may your candle always burn bright. Thank you, Sue. I'm so excited I got a chance to spend time with you. Learn how to work smarter while developing and growing your business. Download our guide called 25 Free Tools to Enhance Your Business and Life. It's our gift to you and available at giftbizunwrap.com slash tools. Thanks for listening and be sure to join us for the next episode. Today's show is sponsored by the Ribbon Print Company. Looking for a new income source for your gift business? Customization is more popular now than ever. Brand your products with your logo 
print a happy birthday Jessica ribbon to add to a gift right at checkout. It's all done right in your shop or craft studio in seconds. Check out the ribbonprintcompany.com for more information. After you listen to the show, if you like what you're hearing, make sure to jump over and subscribe to the show on iTunes. That way you'll automatically get the newest episodes when they go live. And thank you to those who have already left a rating and review. By subscribing, rating, and reviewing, you help to increase the visibility of Gift Biz Unwrapped. It's a great way to pay it forward to help others with their entrepreneurial journey as well. Would you like to be on the show? Or do you know someone who can provide valuable insight from their experiences? If so, we'd love to hear from you. All you need to do is submit a form for consideration. You can access the form at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash guest. 